Hello. Today I'd like to talk about microinverters. Microinverters in an RV also. So whenever you have shore power, use microinverters to backfeed the grid for your net metering to uh, give credit on top of any solar you have on your house. I have a Outback off-grid system. And so when the grid's not available, this system is used. I have a little over 3,000 watts up on the roof of this RV. And to harness the power for off-grid, I have three Outback charge controllers, two MX80s, two, one MX60. Because it's a 12-volt system, uh, it requires all three of these to get the 3,000 watts, or a little over 3,000 watts harnessed. Uh, pretty soon I will be going 24-volt to, and I'll eliminate two of those, and I'll only need one. I'll use one for the 12 volt system and one for the 12, 24 volt system. That's nice, but when the grid's available, when you have shore power, it's more efficient to directly feed the grid and not go through all this stuff. And so what I have here is I went on eBay and bought some uh, mass power, model Sun 600G. I got six of them, one of them per 420 watt panel. Each of them has multi power point tracking. The only thing I don't like about them is that you can't remotely monitor them via internet or computer. It's real simple. Solar panels in, 120 volts out. Very simple. Nothing else. And some status LEDs. That's it. I like I like the simplicity, but it'd be nice to have the monitoring capability so you can see what your solar panels are generating. But I know with the the lower budget, the cheaper system, it's uh, you're not gonna get that. These are very economical. They're about less than $140 shipped a piece. These uh, 600 watts a piece and rated at 22 volts up to 60 volts input. So I was experimenting with different types of inverters. Uh, I have uh, another grid tie here. Doesn't have a brand name. But it's nice, it's got, this one's got a bunch more status LEDs on it, which I think is cool. This one's right at 500 watts. Here's an Enphase M210, M210 brand. Uh, the issue I have, and this is what I like to talk about today with microinverters, is these solar panels are rated at 420 watts a piece, and they have about 60 volt output, 62 volts open circuit volt, open circuit voltage. And so the issue with that is, how are you going to harness that for grid tie? Well, one option is a central inverter where you have one inverter and all the solar panels wired in series. And that would be about a 320 volt or 360 volt bus. And I tried that, and it didn't work out very well because of the partial shading issue. One panel shades, it takes the whole system down. And being a small system like this, that's not the most optimal way to, get, to do it. So. I wanted to have an individual inverter per solar panel, which that's why I went micro inverter, and the out, output's been a lot better than the uh, central inverter. So when you go to the micro inverters, I'm kind of limited on options, so I bought two of the most common eBay inverters. This one here is a 500 watt version, it runs about $160 shipped, and it's $20 more than the 600 watters, and I wanted to compare them side by side to see with the 420 watt panels which one operates better. Unfortunately, for some reason, I was getting about half the output of this one as I was those when I compare side by side and so this one doesn't like the higher voltage even though this one's rated at like 22 to 60 volts also this one doesn't cope with the higher voltage well like these have uh, what's nice about this one is you hook it directly to the solar panel it turns on it works although the output isn't uh, as good as these these here sometimes they don't want to turn on and they go in air mode because the voltage is a little bit above its rated voltage so I've been experimenting with ways to make it work since I don't have very many options for microinverters. Um, I tried the end phases. I tried stacking two of these on the output. It didn't work. Uh, what it did is uh, I stacked uh, on one solar panel. I took this one end phase M210 or two of these end phase t 210s and stacked the uh, DC side. That way. Uh, it's rated at 420 watts at, uh, and these have a good voltage range, we'll focus here. This one has a 31 volt to 50 volt uh, DC range, and it will accept up to 60 volts. 
So when I hooked this up to 40, 420 watt panel, it did work, actually. It turned on and loaded the panel down and started uh, uh, grid tying. And the only issue is, obviously, since it's a 420 watt panel, it's going to be more than this is able to produce, this is going to be able to consume or use. So this maxed out at like 230 watts output, and it stayed there. So what I want to do is stack two of them and see if both of them will pick up and take advantage of the four, full 420 watts. But trying it several times, it didn't work like that. What it did is uh, one inverter would turn on, the other one wouldn't, which is interesting. How one decides to turn on, the other one doesn't, I don't really know. Uh, both turn on at the same time. One will turn on and fully load down to its, its rated uh, output. And then as the sun uh, crests up over the horizon and increases power, uh, there's a big hole in there, um, somewhere around 100% of this one, and then about 50% of the second one before it picked up. So, as the solar panel picked up 100, you know, 50 watts, 100 watts, this first inverter picked up just fine. As the solar panel approached its output at 230 watts, this inverter maxed out. The second inverter I had stacked in didn't pick up until the solar panel was putting out about 300 watts. And then the second inverter picked up and started working fine together stacked. But like I said, there's a big hole there in between the two, and it just I lost a lot of efficiency, so that just didn't work. I also tried two uh, in phase M215s. The uh, M215, I don't know if I got it here somewhere. What do I do with it? Ah, lost it. Uh, I have an in phase M215 I tried. It didn't work at all with the 60 watt panel, or I'm sorry, the 60 volt panel. It wouldn't even turn on at all. And so the M215s are kind of the, the newest ones that they have. Didn't work at all with these solar panels, stacked or by itself, um, like the M210 did. And so that kind of, that's when I left the endeavor of a uh, the nicer microinverters. Um, these are about double the price as the uh, these type inverters. And but what's nice is it's sealed, so you can take it outside, and. You know, it's encapsulated, so you can take it out and the moisture won't hurt it. And you can communicate with it via internet or PC to see what this, each solar panel is putting out. Um, the benefit of these are, uh, I guess, ups and downs. It's not sealed, so you can take it apart and service it, unlike these. You can't service these at all because it's encapsulated. These, you got to mount them inside, and but you can take them apart and work on them and replace components, which I like. I like it very much. Very much so. But these are half the price, and you cannot communicate with these and uh, see what your solar panels are doing, which isn't a big deal, especially for an uh, RV application. Um, I don't really see the total need need of monitoring what the output is, as long as you kind of keep an, keep your eye on your panels, make sure you clean them. These, so I'm out in the country right now, and I got I'm surrounded by uh, fields. And these solar panels being mounted flat get dirty pretty quick, so about once a week I gotta clean them. So as long as you keep an eye on the system, and you kind of see the status LEDs on these, you can know that your output's probably running near optimal output, so you don't need to have a computer trended system like you would on a bigger system. So, uh, oh yeah, so onto these inverters. These inverters worked okay. Uh, the only issue is whenever you just hook the solar panel up to it, they tend to air out at the 62 volts because it's a couple of volts over its rate output. Uh, these run more efficient than these once you do get it going. Uh, these work great uh, as the sun peaks up over the horizon and the voltage slowly rises on the solar panel. These inverters uh, pick up just over 22 volts and immediately start loading the solar panel down and keep the voltage from getting much up over 45, 50 volts so that way uh, it, it works fine. Uh, I guess because these are multi-power point tracking, every once in a while they'll stop, unload, and restart again. And when it does that, and the solar panel's got, uh, it's up to 60 volt out, uh, open circuit voltage, they tend to not work, and they just stay off and error out. And that's the only issue I had with these. So I've been toying with different ways of uh, dealing with that and keeping them from dropping out like that. And so what I came up with is some very large capacitors. These, each of these capacitors are rated at 60 volts. DC at 120,000 microfarads, a little, a little over a tenth of a farad, one capacitor per inverter, 
And when I did this, these have been working flawless the last several days. They haven't went out on error and they've been working great, no issues. So the theory behind this, the capacitors is, whenever these decide to kind of unload and search, and the, it only takes a few seconds, uh, these capacitors act as kind of like, a, I guess you call it like a dynamic load or something, and it loads the solar panel down just long enough for these inverters to kick back in again and bring the voltage back down in the, in the capacitor ready to do it, do it again and that worked out pretty good so I'm gonna mount these in a uh, fire resistant or a metal container so a little more better and wire the run the wires more permanently this is just kind of a bench test right now with these these I got a fan on it to kind of help out because they do get pretty hot even though I'm putting 400 watts into a 600 watt one I like on these types of this type of equipment I like to way overrate my assist, my the inverters. Uh, that way it runs more efficient and um, probably makes these last a little bit longer. So only having one 420 watt panel on a 600 watt inverter helps out. Definitely I would never put a 420 watt panel on a 500 inverter. 500 watt inverter, that's just too close. And so these are still running fairly warm and so I put a fan on there with a timer just for now just to get it going um, until I get this installed better. Uh, so I guess the next deal is, is how do you switch in between the two systems? Um, the way I'm doing it right now is uh, it's kind of manual, and pretty soon I'm going to wire some relays into this panel, this control panel, and make it automatic. So when the grid's available, the solar panel switch over to these, and then when the grid goes down, then it switches over to this, and it makes it more automatic. Here's the solar panel data sheets. Uh, I have six of the nine, uh, the Helios 9T6 panels on the roof right at 420 watts plus zero or plus three percent. As you see the open circuit voltage is 60 which is what created the challenge in the first place. Uh, in the front I have two Helios 7T2s rated right at 305 watts apiece. These only have an open circuit voltage of 45 so that's no problem. So the uh, inverters are working perfect with these. I'm running both both of the 305 watt panels right now in this inverter kind of bench testing to see how well it works and so far it's been working really good and I'm probably gonna buy another one of these two more of these for the front 305 watt panels because I like them very much very much I've been using these for a few weeks now and the mass power Sun 600 G's have been a success very happy with the efficiencies very happy. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So it's really too bad I couldn't use the in-phase inverters. I really wanted to. Um, but that's just the way it goes on an RV. Can't expect much. Well, that's it. If you got any questions about microinverters, feel free to uh, send me a, a message on uh, YouTube. And maybe I can help you out. Maybe. I'm hoping this helps out people that have run into the same issue. The uh, These 420 watt panels aren't widely used yet. They're kind of a new thing, I think. So, especially on an RV, uh, running microinverters. I um, hope this uh, helps some other people out um, with this system. You can do it. Make it work. Well, thank you for watching.